A dear friend of mine recently gifted me the Blu-ray of The Right Stuff, a 1983 historical drama about US Navy, Marine and Air Force test pilots who were involved in aeronautical research at Edwards Air Force Base, California, as well as the Mercury 7, the seven military pilots who were selected to be the astronauts for Project Mercury, which was the first human spaceflight conducted by the United States. It had been years since I last saw the film, which is based on the 1979 book of the same name by Tom Wolfe, so I really appreciated the chance to see it again with older eyes. And what did I find? First up, this is a long film at 192 minutes, and while each part of the film is interesting, tells you something, and pushes the story forward, really building on itself, you can also point to sections and ponder, why is that so long? And did we really need that? For example, when the Mercury 7 guys are having their medicals, a nurse needs a sperm sample from one of them. It's an interesting detail of the process, sure, probably not even one you'd even think about, but then an extended scene where a pilot goes into a bathroom stall, next to a stall where another guy is apparently working on his own sample, and they both start humming the theme song of their respective services, and it just goes on way too long. I get what's trying to be conveyed, and I do get why it's funny on at least a couple of levels, but it's just so laboured over. Did we really need it? A judicious editor would say no. There are lots of scenes like this in the movie where we'd still get the story and the characters in it, but with less scenes. It's like, I don't know, a builder who keeps adding bits to a new house long after it's already good enough. Eventually, he takes a step back and looks at what's there and realises it's too much, but it's too late to change. In a similar vein, the movie opens with a 20-minute segment where Chuck Yeager hears about an opening to pilot the Bell X-1 and then proceeds to break Mark I in it. An historical and interesting setup, sure, but Jaeger isn't really a main character. Sure, we flash back to him from time to time throughout the film, and at the end we see him famously pilot a jet so high he can actually see space. So, he's certainly a character in the film. And yes, it's important that Jaeger broke Mark I, and that aeronautical research was going on in parallel to the space program. Yes, 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 I get all of that but it's somewhat distracting to the meat of the story, which quickly becomes the selection, training, and missions of the Mercury 7 guys, but we still need to look back in on Chuck from time to time. It's honestly like two different movies intersecting every 15 to 20 minutes or so. My friend actually said to me that if she was making the film, she would have trimmed the Jaeger part of the story and just concentrated on the Mercury 7 guys alone, and I think her instincts are right. While it's nice to start just after World War II and show the early jet era and breaking Mark I, as this adds real context to the story of rockets and spaceflight, the pacing of the film is slightly off because of that parallel storyline. Indeed, you could have explained the early years of rockets and breaking Mark I in a text-based preamble, and just gone in straight to the Mercury 7 storyline, making for a much shorter and tighter film. The early 1980s public seemed to agree that the film wasn't quite right, as it was a box office bomb, grossing about $21 million against a $27 million budget. That said, critically, it was nominated for eight Oscars at the Academy Awards, winning four, and in 2013 it was selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry. So you could say it's done miles better in the years since it was released. And I'll just end by saying that, quite interestingly, a mere three years after The Right Stuff was released, we'd have another film out in cinemas with hotshot pilots wearing cool aviator glasses, pushing the envelope and waving the flag for America. Top Gun, meanwhile, was a box office success with its tight editing and rock and roll soundtrack. But that's maybe a topic for another day.